Hello and welcome to my shop. My name is Tracy Maxfield and this is Hammerdown Woodworking and today we're going to make a walk you through how I made a quick and dirty circle jig for cutting out circles like this tabletop. I had a client wanted a table and it's she wanted it round. I didn't have a circle cutting jig so I made one and we'll take you through that process of how I did that. All right, the first thing that I've done was took some half inch plywood, and you can make this out of anything as long as it's thin enough for your router base screws to go all the way through. But I set my router base down on it and marked out uh, the circle for it. And make sure that you put it far enough away from the end that you have uh, half of the circle that you're going to be making. Then I drew some lines just to find, find approximately the center of this. These do not have to be exact at this time. Your router bit, when you plunge it down through there, you'll see here in a minute, it will make this, uh, this center anyway. It'll make it on its own. But then I drew some marks to make the, the arm of this jig. I just used a framing square. And after I get that marked, Kind of looks like a big thermometer, but I took it over to the bandsaw, and right off the bat, the jig was actually hitting my camera stand. It took me a second to get the blade started into it, uh, but just cut cut that out, staying as close to the line as you can. And like I said, this does not have to be exact. It doesn't have to be real pretty or anything like that, but uh, you don't want any more excess weight on this when you go to making this jig. Than, than what is necessary. Then I took it over to uh, the sander and just eat, smoothed out all those edges. You don't want to get a splinter or something in your hand when you're trying to uh, move a router around in a circle to making out a tabletop. But I just kept working with that until I got all the edges kind of sanded down to the line like you would if you were making a piece of furniture, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I removed the router base from my router. You won't be needing this other than uh, to find these holes. And I took a VIX bit, laid that base down on top of my jig and just marked those holes. And then I took a uh, Forstner bit at my drill press and countersink these holes enough that your uh, screw head will go all the way down in there and not be sticking out the bottom. Now I had to come back and, and deepen these some because my screws are very short and the countersink that I initially put on it, which is right here, it wasn't deep enough. I only had a couple of threads sticking out the other side to go into my router, so I had to come back and redrill those. But then I took a smaller bit and drilled my through hole all the way through for the, the screws to attach it to the bottom of the router base. And the size bit will determine upon what size screws your router base has. And once I got that done, I took it over and I attached just the router uh, plunge router base to the bottom of that and then plunge down through it and it will make you a, an exact zero clearance. And then I took a framing square again and make sure that you're not sticking the end of this square up inside of one of those flutes. Roll the bit around to where it's actually touching the cutter portion of the bit and then just pull your measurement. If you're needing, uh, say, a 40 inch table, you're going to measure out 20 inches and that'll give you 40 inches. I marked that and then took a, a drill bit and drilled down to where the edge of the bit is actually going to my mark. Don't drill exactly center, you'll come up a little bit short on your circle. But you should be able to take your screw and just plunge it down through that you don't want it binding you, you do want it to spin. This one is actually a little tight. but And then I took that same sheet of half inch plywood that I cut this jig off of and I
plunge down into it and it was barely wide enough but it, it was wide enough don't go all the way through into your table just uh, enough to score it a little bit to where you can get a measurement on uh, the size circle that you're cutting just checking to make sure that you are correct And then I took my tape and I pulled, and you're measuring to the inside of this circle and made sure that my measurement was what I, I wanted. Now it's time to try this thing out. So I found the center of my wood panel, this tabletop, and I took an awl and I indented that some for the drill bit to take off. And I marked my drill bit with a piece of tape so I wouldn't go all the way through. And I took some paste wax and put on the bottom of the jig so it would it would glide around the top of this table surface uh, without scratching or binding, creating any friction. Then line that screw up with your hole. Make sure you're going into the hole that you drill. And then just tighten that down. And once you've got that tightened down, check it, make sure that your bit is going to actually get into wood all the way around. And don't over tighten this, but make sure that you get it tight enough with that set screw in the center that, that you're actually pivoting on. And this is white oak that this panel is made out of. And I use two different bits. I'll explain those a little bit more here in a little bit, but there they are. One's a spiral down cut and one's a spiral up cut. And both are half inch, so you can change bits and it won't affect your, your jig any. So I cut about halfway through that tabletop and I changed out from a spiral down cut to a spiral up cut. And it's time to make the final pass, which actually I cut, it took several, I only cut about an eighth inch or so deep at a time in this. But then there's your tabletop or your circle or whatever you're cutting with this jig. Well, I hope you find that helpful. Uh, just a simple jig. It does not have to look all that extravagant with a lot of hardware on it or anything. The only hardware that I use besides the router and bits itself is one small screw with a washer on it. And I started on with the tabletop upside down. And that's where I put that screw right in the center of it. Uh, when I started my cuts, I used a spiral down cut bit so it would sever fibers as it's uh, starting into the material, making a nice, clean, crisp edge on the bottom. And then when I got about halfway through this table, I swapped over to a spiral up cut, which when it's pulling from the, the bottom, when you exit what is actually your top of your table, it's severing those fibers up against the, the material itself leaving some nice, clean, crisp edges. Anyway, that's how I did mine. Uh, I hope you find that helpful. If you haven't, if you like this content, I encourage you to hit that like button. Uh, if you enjoy the work that we're doing, we encourage you to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.